Hey, 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 guys, super excited to be coming to you with another episode of the Speakeasy Podcast, where we go behind the scenes and what it means to be the successfully paid speaker or author. And in this time, you know that that definitely means something completely different than what we would have been saying uh, maybe like three months ago, but it is still much, much to learn and grow. And guess what? We still have opportunities out here. So I know you saw the topic and the title for today. Definitely want to make sure that we're getting your feedback. As speakers and authors, we have been listening to what you have had to say. You guys have been reaching out to us, messaging us. You've been coming and connecting with us in the community. We are so thankful for the conversation that you are building. So if you haven't done so already, come join the conversation, bit.ly forward slash world voice community you can join the free facebook group and join right there but if that's not it for you then by all means you can leave us a review over on apple podcast by going to bit.ly forward slash speakeasy podcast show all lowercase with that being said let's jump into today's topic so i know we're like day three thousand. 600, 4 billion and 12 at this point. And some of you have been going through, you know, some happy times. Some of you have been going through some not so happy times. Um, some of you have been trying to sneak out to the barbershop and the hair salon. Even if you're just standing out front and acting as if someone is going to open the door, I get it. <laughs> I definitely understand, but you are not alone. Speak Easy podcast listeners, I'm super excited to let you know that you are not alone. You know, we are still going to be on the air, giving you everything that you can take, even in this moment, to still be the successful speaker and author. So with that being said, we're going to talk, we're going to dive into some clarity. We're going to dive into some confidence because some of you may be in a space where you can't get out to speak on a stage. You can't get out to a networking event. Your The book expos have been canceled. Events have been canceled. And we're just like, man, it took a blow. Took it, it took it. And it just, it knocked the legs from under us when it came to our budget for this year and everything but that's okay. Today, we're going to talk about rebuilding that confidence. So with that being said, I'm super excited about my guest today. Hello, how are you? I'm good, Alta Vs. Thank you so much for inviting me. This is Jasmine Taksham. I am a confidence and clarity mindset coach. I mostly help women to understand their value and build their worth and build their confidence so that they can really stand in their authentic power and charge what they are worth. And uh, my mission is to really empower um, women to shine their light and make the money that they deserve. Oh my goodness. And so we need that now more than ever, because let's be honest, quarantine and COVID-19 and all the things going on and having to be outside with a mask on. And I mean, it's just a lot to handle. So many people that confidence at the beginning of the year was at a 3,000. And right now it's just tipping over three. <laughs> so what would be the first thing that you would say to somebody who they woke up this morning and they're just like, um, I don't have that confidence anymore. Right, right. Um, you know, for me, you know, I've been uh, really diving into the confidence piece, piece because uh, I wasn't, I was born with, or I w at least when I, I would say that when I was growing up, I always uh, struggled with the low self-confidence and low self-esteem. And uh, what I've realized towards um, much, much later after, actually after college was that um, I realized I did not know anything about myself. You know, like, you know, like I know my name, you know, I know that I am a female, you know, I know that you know, who my parents are, you know, where I was born. I know this kind of stuff that's on paper, but deep down, I really didn't know who I am. Like it was to the point that when I went out on the, for my very first date with my husband now, you know, but that was, you know, a dozen years ago, he would ask me um, during the first date, like, what's your favorite color? 
what's your favorite song and what's your favorite food? I'm like, I don't know. And um, I was really thinking at the back of my mind, I was like, well, does it really matter? Really, that was exactly what I was thinking. I was like, well, it doesn't really matter what I like because it's not up to me. So since then, I did a lot of work. Like I did a lot of digging, you know, trying to find who I am, you know, on the, on the inner, inner me. And in answer to your question, I think that it is really super important for us to know who we are uh, at the soul level because um, that is our anchor, right? You know, knowing who we are um, as a person, as a soul, that is our anchor for our life. And so it really doesn't question is, it really, or the situation that we are living in right now, it really doesn't matter whether we are homebound for another three months or we are back to normal. Because if we know who we are, we are only, hopefully, <laughs> going to only create the life that is fit for us. Right? So that's how I feel um the very first step like the most important step is knowing who we are inside and out and it could be culturally it could be but i see a lot of people um that i've met as well encounter that a lot of us are um continue to search who we are so some people know quite you know like at a um to a good extent you know like who they are and what works for them and what doesn't work for them some people they are they need a little bit more work you know in determining you know like to un, like in terms of their understanding where they're at um you know for for themselves because um i would have to say for some people including myself back then it's like i put that responsibility onto someone else like i thought that someone or like my boss or my teacher or my best friend should know who I am and what I like. They should be able to read our mind. So we tend, or I tended, I know back then, you know, put that responsibility totally onto someone else. And that, 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 oh my goodness. So that, that brings me to a couple of different things. Mm -hmm. One, because in a time where we're in a confined space and we're with the people that we quote unquote think that they should know us the best. Yep. It's really making us face that. Yeah. Head on. Oh, yeah. Do you know the people you live with and do they really know you? Right. And I think that's been like, that's one of those things that has really been etching at the confidence of people as we're, as we're quarantined is that now you're in a place and you're stuck and you're in this position and you're looking around and going, I don't really know who I'm in this house with. Right. So here's the other thing that I felt like it's um, as important as well, or if not more, is that now that we are being very restricted in our movement in terms of you know when can we go out or where can we go and that type of things right it's like we are being forced into spending time with our family or ourselves a lot you know depending on your living situation because for some people they live alone and it might not create any, you know, there's not a significant dramatic change to their living condition. But, you know, depending on like whether they go to work, you know, how often they go out, it's like, okay, now that they are being forced to really stay home a lot with themselves. And that was actually one of the problems that I had with myself is like I couldn't, like I couldn't stand spending time with myself. Like I would jam pack like Friday because I have a day job. Friday afternoon, I started texting my friends like, what's, what's for dinner? You know, what's for lunch on Saturday? What's, what's the plan? Because now that I look back, it's like, well, really, I wasn't comfortable spending time with myself. 
So what it is, is I found that it's like we are given the opportunity to do a lot of introspection now, but of course, you know, depending again with our uh, individual situation, because we could be super, super busy because the kids are home, the family are home, you know, you, you cannot go out to eat and then you have to cook a lot. And, and it, it can be, you, your life can be even crazier than before. That, that brings me to the next point where, uh, so we have this time where we can sit and we can kind of get into a space of self-development but what about the ones that, well, myself, you know, the, the person that I thought I was, was the person that needs to be on a stage. The person that I thought I was, uh, was the person that needed to be at an event of physically in front of people in order for me to thrive. What would you say to someone who, that's their headspace right now, and uh, they're really going through it because they're like, I can't thrive. Am I really, am I really successful at doing this? Or am I really the expert in this industry if I can't get in front of people? Well, you know, for me, I don't personally foresee that we're going to be homebound, you know, for the rest of our lives, you know, so this is a temporary time that we would have to just accommodate and adjust, you know, and, you know, the thing is, um, thank goodness to technology that we have uh, many more options nowadays, you know, to go do online virtual meetings and summit versus you know 20 years ago or even 10 years ago so i really felt like that is a sometimes you know how i see it is we don't necessarily change things when everything is working out perfectly so it's when we are being put in a situation that we really don't have any other options then we will really sit down and consider okay maybe i'll try to do things online you know and one of the um um, most common thing, you know, I guess, depending on different state is for children, because I have two young children at home. And, you know, as a parent, you know, I'm sorry, I will admit that, you know, I am so happy on the days that they go to school, while I get to stay home, because I really get to work on my business, on, um, you know, doing some catch up home chores and cooking. Now they are being forced to do online learning. Right. So, you know, the school really didn't have um, that much of a advanced warning. They had like maybe two weeks and then everybody is now up, you know, adopting, you know, thank goodness they have the infrastructure on the technology side. But who would have thought that all the kids, you know, or a lot of the kids in the U.S. and worldwide, they're going to start learning online, you know, for little kids. So it's like. If it weren't for this um, virus, that would have never happened. That would never force them to test out, you know, how great uh, it's working. Because I was even thinking that now that I'm talking, you know, maybe perhaps when the kids are sick at home, in the future, I'm talking about back into, you know, everything's back to normal. The sick kids can even tune in and not miss a day class, right? So it's just always, you know, there is always both sides to each situation, right? There's always something good that's coming out of it. So depending on how we're going to look at the situation, that would be what I, um, my two cents, you know? So what do you think though, Alta It's It's been interesting. I, I, my children know that I do a lot with, you know, Zoom and a lot with live streaming and StreamYard. And so they, you know, they kind of have accommodated, oh, okay, we know mom uses a platform that's similar, you know, and they're all in high school. So they're like, oh yeah, we can, we can figure it out. We're, we're pretty good. And it did make me go and think about other things like, okay, so yeah, if you have, so when we have, um, cause we do have students that are, um, they have an illness and can't go to school for a month at a time, two weeks at a time. Right. This is a great option as opposed to them being alienated. And I think that is, um, 
we, I was doing a, a part of a summit earlier. And one of the things she said is that in this time, it shifts our mind to think, you know, we're stuck in our homes. So think about how people feel that are in nursing homes. Right. Think about the terminally ill who are in hospitals or in hospices and they can't leave. This is, this is their normal. Right. You know, it's our temporary normal, but this is their normal. And, you know, just how that makes us go back and say, I need to go and reach out to this person or that person. I need to go and, you know, see how I can um, change some things or help in this way. And for my kids, man, it's a, four teenagers, three are in high school, one is in college. And I, at, at one point I was like, okay, I feel like I've been thrusted back into high school. I must've did something wrong. <laughs> they have to go to high school again, but they're a little more advanced than some of the other students because of the experience of them, me working from home and them oh. seeing, you know, what I do. Right. But I was like, wow, what about the parent who, what about the parent who doesn't speak English and right. they don't know how to manage this? What about the parent who they have an illness and so they don't know how to help their child? Like it's so many things that come up, but we're like in a different headspace where now we can, we can create a new normal. Right. Right. Create a new normal. Besides the fact that my kids are like, so if I can do this in an hour, 30 minutes and be online with you for like an hour, get the work done. Why am I in school? So long? <laughs> it's to, I mean, I had to explain to my daughter, like, or my, my daughter, I think a couple of weeks ago, it was like, cause I was telling her that when I was young, um, I'm, I'm from Hong Kong, so I don't know if you know, but when I was going to elementary school then, um, 20 something years ago, I can't even remember now, I, it's only half day. And she was like, well, that is no fair. You know, why do you get to go home and have lunch and you be done? And I'm like, well, you know what, baby? In the US is, is actually part of babysitting service, unfortunately, you know, because it's catered for both working parents very true very true so that's how they set it up you know so that you know um the parents can go to work exactly and not we, have to worry about the kids and you when know, we get it that way it's like okay and it, and and i also found so i was it was interesting my youngest has been asking me for some time about homeschooling and i was like um i don't think i'm the homeschool mom I don't think that that's my area of expertise. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be a good look. And in this experience, I'm like, okay, so it's doable. It's not completely bad. Um, but I actually love it. And we've done like uh, virtual field trips. We went to the Georgia's the Georgia Aquarium. We went to zoos. Yeah. We went to the Louvre. We went to Yellowstone Park. And so I'm like, that's okay, something to think about. It's something to think about. I said, okay, it's not. That's not too bad at all. And yeah. it gives them a different experience. I think that's the the biggest thing is that we can be a lot more hands on at home um, than they can be at at a school when they're stuck in a building we can go and once the outside is opened <laughs> right. we can go i'm i'm near orchards i'm near farmland oh nice you can always go, go for a field trip and for a field trip right and go now i don't know about milking a cow myself but <laughs> <laughs> if that's what they so choose to do we can do that yeah. you know we can go and pick berries right yeah. at the orchard around the corner so it's it's different for where I am now, but if this would have happened 10 years ago, I was in the city. I don't know what I would have done. Right. Because it's a different experience there. Everything is fast. Like in the city, they're still riding buses and, and trains yeah. in big groups as if nothing is going on. And we're down here and they're like, you know, only letting a certain number of people in the store. Like we can't. Right. It's, it's, 
an interesting scenario depending on where you are, but I'm, I'm learning to, to get a grip on it somewhat. Yeah, I think there's always something new amidst the mm. uncomfortableness or crisis, whatever you would call it, right? And there's a lot of people that are saying because in the Asian uh, language uh, for crisis, it actually means um, danger and opportunity. So that's always, and I was listening to a YouTube video yesterday by, I would say like Jim Rogers, and he even said it, that it's in Korean, in Japanese, and, you know, of course in Chinese, and then maybe there's another one. So they all mean danger and opportunity. So it, depending on how we see it, you know, the glass is half full or half empty. You know, so there is always something new, a new idea or new ways of doing things or new opportunity from something, you know, that we see, we deem to see to be, oh, crisis or unfortunate, you know, things like that. So I like that. Oh, my goodness. So now I'm going to have to look that, look that up. I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm smiling like really big because my kids, uh, my girls, um, the three that are in high school, they love... <laughs> learning about other cultures and so I one of the posts I did online was I said when did homeschooling include me watching (laughs) k-dramas um (laughs) now I have to learn Korean thanks that's not what was it (laughs) where is the where's the manual for all this this is not supposed to be in here right they watch k-dramas and j-dramas they listen to K-pop. It will, oh, nice. It, like, it's funny because I tell people the running joke is if you were ever standing outside of my home, you would never know what, what nationality lived in my home because they play every Anything. genre of music. <laughs> oh, my God. Country, jazz, R&B, hip-hop. Wow. Gospel, everything. And you just go, yeah. They wouldn't know. They wouldn't know who lives here. That is awesome that they are so open-minded. Yeah, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. To the point where um, my three girls, uh, my oldest and my youngest are my daughters, and my middle girl is my youngest sister uh, that I have custody of. And okay. she actually wants to go to Korea and teach English. Oh, wow. Um, so she's currently doing a teaching program while she's in high school. And then, of course, she'll finish her degree, and then that's right. that's her goal. And I'm just like, I I love that. I never even came close to having the confidence to say, "Oh, I want to teach somebody anything." <laughs> when I was well, in high school. Well, you are bringing the message out to public, so this is your way of teaching. <laughs> yes, indeed. I said, "Ooh, oh, okay. Well." I think I can handle that, but it definitely, um, it makes you think, uh, I know for me, a confidence booster has been listening to some of the comments that they say and some of the conversations they have. That's been a confidence booster for me. Cause I'm like, I said that. <laughs> Don't say it out loud. Cause you'll get in trouble as a parent. But I said that. But I said that yep. <laughs> so with that being said, if somebody came to you and said, okay, I need a magic pill for confidence, what's in this magic pill that I could take to start building my confidence right now? Again, you know, going back is number one is really take an inventory of um, the characteristics that you you have you know it's like what who are you really deep down other than your name and your race and all the stuff like but like what like to me it's like what is your core value what's your um uh, message and the what's your principles what's your ethics you know knowing who you are is like the number one step you know into building the confidence that you are um we all want you know it's like highly sought like it's almost like a highly sought after um a commodity that's intangible but everybody wants it right but you know when we go through that you know it it might not be a one day thing it might be a month it's a lifelong process that what i would have to say i don't mean to be uh discouraging because it's 
always fascinating to be able to link the dots and say, oh my gosh, right, this is so resonating to me because especially when we come across, like there's always something that is like, it's bugging us, you know, like people say something or like quote or something that you don't quite resonate, but you can't really quite explain it until you get to somebody that said the same thing, not the same thing, but said the thing that entirely resonate with you. You're like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for explaining that to me because this is like how I, what I believe. You know, I just had that yesterday. I was like, oh my gosh, thank you for allowing me to validate myself. Because, you know, most, a lot of the times we invalidate ourselves. Like, well, you know what? I don't know if that's the right way to do things. You know, if that it's socially acceptable, but we are who we are. Like we can't always change ourselves to fit the externals because, you know, then we will be changing like a thousand times a day because, you know, the externals is constantly changing. You are the one that has fully, like 100% control you know, over ourselves. Like we are the one that have complete control over ourselves. But like once we get to know ourselves, you know, I would say um, there are things that we kind of still have a grudge against ourselves in the past. Um, The next step is accepting for who we are and forgiving the things that we don't like so much that we did or you know, something that we are angry at ourselves, that we could have done it better, right? And then eventually, you know, as the process keep on going, we we are going to get to a point that um, we will embrace ourselves and love ourselves. You know, when we are truly in love with ourselves, that's when all the fear of judgment you know, they just drop fear of criticism that just drop, you know, we don't really care what other people think about us. It's like, well, this is who I am. I'm completely accepting, knowing, accepting and loving who I am. And it's almost like, well, too bad if you don't like me because that's okay, because I'm completely in love with myself. So that's my different portion of the magic pill that I, I wanted the way that I dissect it. Um, but I just really felt like that is the process that uh, lead us to self-confidence. I love that. Cause I think that's definitely, it's, it's tangible. It's something that they can put their hands on and think about right now and say, okay, let me get my notebook. Let me get my journal. Let me sit down with myself. Let me co- have a coaching session with myself. And you really see, you know, in these points, am I taking this confidence pill on a consistent basis? Am I taking this like a vitamin? Because some people haven't been taking it like a vitamin and where we come full circle to where we are at the moment. You know, it's, this is something that is consistently done. It's not just a one and done thing. uh, Because as we grow, our personality changes. Right. You know, so the, I, I absolutely love that. That was perfect. Oh, thank um, you. This has been an amazing episode. Speak Easy podcast listeners. Uh, you know, we always want to inspire you to keep pushing. We want to inspire you to push beyond your boundaries, push outside of your comfort zone. And so, um, Jasmine, let them know how they can reach out to you because there's some that may need, um, they may need that one-on-one. They may need, uh, you know, let let me go and see what she's talking about today because it may be something that inspires something for them. So uh, how can they get in contact with you and how can they find you online? Uh, Yes, um, my email address is support at thegreatthingsinlife.com. So is T-H-E-G-R-E-A-T-T-H-I-N-G-S-I-N. And then live is L-I-F-E dot com. I will give that to uh, Alta Weeks. But it's support at the great things in life dot com. I am in the process of um, building a website right now. So it's also called the great things in life dot com. Um, 
I do have a, a contribution of eradicate imposter syndrome in this book. The one thing every mompreneur needs to know, and there is another one coming about confidence. There's a chapter that I wrote on confidence. It's coming out next month. I don't have the specific date yet, but it's also, it's called the one thing every mom needs to know. So I will send that to you as well. And uh, if I have the date, I will let you know. And then the, uh, our, our, you know, your audience, you know, if they are interested, they can go to the book and then, or email me directly. Uh, hopefully my website will be up within a month or so. And then they will have more ways to get in touch with me as well. I love it. I love it. Guys, we appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, we know that this may be a, a hard space to be in at this time. But this is only a moment and we will make it out of this on the other side. With that being said, we appreciate each and every one of you because without the Speak Easy podcast listeners, there's no Speak Easy podcast. Thank you for giving us your reviews. Thank you for giving us your insight. For those of you that have not done so already, be sure to come and connect. Be a part of the conversation, bit.ly forward slash world voice communities the free facebook group join the conversation why because we want to keep inspiring you to be able to be the successfully paid speaker and author with that being said i appreciate you guys and until next time don't forget to press it out see ya bye